Hi everyone, this is Fred. Uh, so today's video is about uh, shading in a vector styler or a vector software uh, that you have. And um, we will start with a quick reminder about uh, shadows. Then we'll see some of the tools uh, I use. And then I will just make a little case study to show you how I did this uh, image you can see right now. Okay, so let's start with a quick reminder about light and shadows. The definition of shadows is basically uh, the part of an object, the, some area of an object of a surface that doesn't uh, fully receive the light from a light source or doesn't receive any light at all. The two cases, the uh, most common cases, is because the part of the object, the portion of the object, is on the opposite direction from the light source or the object, like here, cannot receive a light source because it's blocked by another object. In that case, it's the cast shadow. There is another uh, category that is mostly uh, used uh, in, th in uh, 3D. It's called the ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is more about the, the little shadows uh, that, that appears, especially in the fold part of the body or things like this, or, or, or in a, a lot of uh, shapes very very small uh, areas and uh, that doesn't receive the light and uh, for instance your finger you you have your fingers you have a, a limitation of a phalanx and uh, when you, you fold it you can see that uh, it's becoming dark this is uh, kind of things that helps to define the shape in uh, in some cases so it's um, it's the third ki kind but the most common is, is about the, the shadow and the cast shadows and this is the one we, we will see today mainly so for the characteristic of a light, there is different. The first one, of course, is the direction. The direction of a light will define the direction of a shadow because the shadow is always the opposite. So the two main kind of lights are the sunlight, which is considered by, by its convention, but it's considered as parallel, although it's not technically totally true. And uh, the second one is the what we call the bulb light and a bulb light like uh, you have electric bulb someone in your house and it spread the light uh, in a different way because it goes on uh, all direction even if it stop and rebound on the ceiling so it's the two main kind of, uh, of light after of course you can have uh, the spotlight with specific uh, direction um, etc so, but what we have to keep in mind that the direction is important and in the case of drawing it's important because it makes the drawing consistent if you have a, a direction which is defined from the beginning and after all the shadows uh, they should uh, obey the same rule and the same uh, direction the second characteristic is intensity intensity means that the, the strength of the light will produce different uh, shadows for instance on a very bright day, uh, the sun rays they, they um, produce very uh, crisp, sharp uh, cast shadows and, and shadows. So it's very um, you can see very clearly the limit of the um, of the object. But in some cases, for instance, uh, there is an overcast uh, sky, and um, instead of having very um, focused uh, sun ray, uh, they dilute it. They spread inside the the clouds, and uh, it gives some kind of overall uh, light and in that case uh, the shadows they can be no shadows at all in some case or they can be quite blurry and something a uh, phenomena you cannot um, you can see sometimes on a, on a beautiful day and a cloud is temporarily uh, hiding the sun but the, the light still still there and you see that the, the shadows is sharp and then blur and then sharp again when the cloud disappear so this is uh, about intensity the color so the color uh, of the light of course the, the typical example is a sunset you will have uh, everything become warm everything that obeys to the uh, to, to this light will become warm and uh, also uh, between the, the uh, bright day like a blue sky and uh, an overcast day which is gray and since it's gray will give a gray light and everything uh, around will be um, uh, less intense in terms of hue and saturation 
and uh, so the color the, the color of the light is also important and there is two uh, parameters two uh, other parameters a little bit less important but the number of sources because uh, we as artists we can just decide how many um, how many uh, light source we have we can maybe put one two three four uh, twenty if we want and um, we can make them different uh, different in color different in intensity and different in direction so this is also a parameter you can use in your creation another thing is also the rebounds the rebounds is uh, uh, something that uh, is important to to create something which looks real and uh, that's why the, the 3d software has a lot of calculation to do about the rebounds of the light to make things look very uh, real and so that's uh, the fact that uh, of course there is the, the direct uh, sun, uh, sunlight or or a light uh, a ray of light but also the the global uh, light is bouncing all around and uh, even some parts of the object which are um, in the in the shades they still have they still visible and they still have sometimes a little part which is a little bit brighter like we can see here so it's because the light is uh, bouncing okay two other uh, parameters we have to uh, to focus on is the, the shape themselves, the object which receives the light. So there is two aspects, is the, the sharp object with sharp angle and uh, all the round object like solids of a revolution. And um, in that case, when we draw for the sharp angles, of course you have uh, the limit between the, the sides of the object are very clear and sharp and visible. And in the case of solids of a revolution, uh, whatever is a sphere, a cylinder, or a cone, uh, the transition is more uh, gradual. So it means that you have you will use gradient when you want to show the, um, the transition from um, the, the, the the shadows to uh, to the light to the lighted side. The second part is uh, shiny versus matte. If your uh, object are shiny, the way they reflect. Uh, they absorb and reflect the light is a little bit different it means that you have something a little bit more uh, intense and also you can see that it's, uh, it's more uh, exaggerated from uh, every side the shadows are a little bit darker and the light is a little bit lighter so uh, brighter so that's a little difference and something you you that can help also to uh, if you want to render some materials although i'm not doing super realistic stuff but just it can help sometimes to give some info information okay so to see the the basic of the shading the way i do it of course there is several way but my way my, my workflow my process i start about talking about the the background uh, like in digital painting, I don't want to use um, a white background because it's too bright and uh, it can alter the way you perceive uh, the colors and the shades. So uh, it's better, in my opinion, it's better to start with something which is um, gray or if you already know the color you will use uh, in your final uh, drawing, of course you can use the background color you will use later because you already can uh, see the effect uh, it will have so this is a um, the first uh, advice the second advice I would say is to um, uh, have a limited use of a black and white I mean pure black and pure white try to keep it for a, a specific uh, use and a limited use and doing that you will give them more power which is uh, important if everything is a uh, if there is too much black and white uh, for this kind of course uh, of drawing like I show you it's not about a, it's not a general comment of course if you're doing comics or if it's your own style do it but what I mean if you want to have something a little bit smooth in the transition and things like that don't overuse the pure white and pure black okay while doing this I just make some simple object and uh, I use um, a cylinder just because it's a solid of revolution and uh, we we talk about the fact that uh, solid of revolution they have a gradient for the for the, sh uh, the shades because of the transition of the light is uh, gradual so the 
things I use, the, the, the tools I use are mainly, really uh, most of the time, is the gradient. So the gradient in the case of a, of a cylinder, if you consider that uh, it would be a linear gradient in that case. So let's do it. So I start with something very simple and then I go to the gradient itself. I can here reverse if I decide that the light is coming from a, another spot. And of course I can here or inside the, the here, so uh, it's up to you here. Uh, you have a control, it can be a control using keyboard and value or you can do it visually. So in that case you can uh, also of course so play with uh, the shape, you can change. This is of course the, the most uh, classic use, you know. Okay, it can be brighter, it can be darker, bluer, etc, etc. So you have to handle it. So like I just told you, try to avoid the full black. So in that case, what you will do, maybe, you will be using a not totally full black and in some, in some case a little bit colored, okay, colored one. A very, very strong dark uh, blue in that case because it is blue, but you can use it. And you see that in that case the translation is uh, smoother. Like we said before, uh, light is bouncing, so in some cases you can just want to, you double click somewhere here and you will just move the shape, sorry, I have to select first. And you just move your colors and it will give you this feeling of, uh, this feel of, up. okay, of a, the bouncing light, some bouncing light. In that case, I can make even my uh, my background even, even a little bit darker. Yeah, so I think it's better. Yes, much better. So, and I hope that the video will show it. Okay, so you see, just with this simple uh, gradient, um, linear gradient, I give uh, a nice uh, smooth shading. So this is something uh, I use a lot. Another thing I use a lot is duplicating uh, the shapes and, um, and so I can have several effects at once. For instance, the body of my, uh, of my cylinder, I copy it and I would just use, I don't know, up. sorry, sorry. And I will use uh, another gradient, but maybe this gradient will be, uh, for some reason, uh, another style. Because uh, I want to, to create some, some effect, I don't know, why not. In that case okay and depending on the, the fusion mode I can use for instance some uh, blending mode like screen or a multiply or whatever I can have a double effect so it's uh, interesting my gradient is a bit weird but I just need to up change this that, okay and you see that in that case I have two effects I have a light coming from here let's say and this is coming from here it starts to be a little bit more subtle than the previous one, it starts to be interesting. So uh, you have to, of course, have a consistent, uh, consistent, consistent light, sorry, and uh, in that case you can have some uh, nice effect, a nice transition. So as you can see, when I do comment Y, you see that the, the line work is very clean, because I just duplicate, uh, duplicate the same, uh, the same, sorry, the same uh, shape. So it's quite uh, interesting because it gives, a, when you have a lot of shapes like uh, the, the character, uh, I will show you later, uh, it's, it's good to be able to uh, identify every every part of, uh, of a body or something like that to, uh, to quickly uh, apply some colors. So this is the, the first thing. The second thing I use for the shading, it's not very uh, logical here, but it's just for showing it. I will use a shape that uh, Maybe I would just put a shape. Let's say that I will have some, some kind of a highlight. So in that case, when I do uh, some highlight stuff, I will make the Alt W to make my stroke. What I really use a lot, so I will give some thickness, for instance. So my highlights will be like this. Of course, I will use some blur, so I, I um, I select my uh, my path and I go to the effect and I would give it a blur effect. 
let's say a Gaussian blur, and uh, of course you adjust the amount depending on the size of the of your stroke and the size of your of your drawing, uh, overall drawing. So you can be also the fact that it depends if you have something which is more like a plastic, which is a, a highlight, which is bright, but uh, less uh, concentrated than. Uh, a metal one, so so it depends on the kind of texture you want to to show. And what I often use, in that case, you won't be super visible, but we will see later in the case study, is to use the profile, and especially this profile, which is a transition. You see that it start gradually, you have a top, and then gradually uh, vanish. And I think that the, the combination of this profile and the and the blur effect is very very powerful. It's not super. Uh, visible here but actually when you have some some shape you see you, you start to have some round shape or something like that you want to show some fold or something like that because of course you can do it in, uh, with dark colors it's just uh, and it's a combination of the profile and the blur effect is very interesting so gradient copy with fusion mode and profile these are uh, the main tool i use in some cases i can use some uh, uh, some uh, mask to, uh, to hide some part, but uh, most of the time I, I, I don't need to use that. And of course, uh, you know about the, the other kind of um, thing, which is the blur effect. You just take some, uh, let's say I make some highlights, so I just reverse, okay. I have this and I want to make some kind of uh, highlights here as well. And you use the blur effect, which is C, and uh, the only thing is you make it strong in some case, you can even double it, means you have it and you copy another one and uh, the other one has a less strong blur effect. Anyway, it depends on uh, what you want to do. But in all that cases, it's very, uh, very interesting because you can, uh, you, you really can uh, have some smooth transition after it's a work of uh, uh, balancing the darkness and the brightness of uh, the colors and of course you using uh, uh, some uh, consistent colors uh, for me i'm not super specialist in color so i try to use a limited palette every time limited swatch every time not a big amount of co different colors so uh, i feel more comfortable to um, to handle my image if i know that i, uh, I don't have to think too much about uh, uh, the amount of uh, this color or that color so these are the most uh, useful tool uh, for me, but in some cases you may be willing to use the gradient um, gradient uh, here, mesh gradient editor, which is a powerful tool, but in my opinion it's too complicated. Uh, so just using this uh, couple of, uh, of uh, tools make me uh, give me the result I need. So I think it's uh, quite fair. So. Let's see some uh, application in the um, in the image uh, I've shown you in the beginning. Okay, so let's do this a little uh, case study. As usual, I start with a pencil sketch, which is uh, my way of working, my process, always uh, starting on the on the paper sheet. Uh, as you can see, the, the character is a little bit <laughs> freaky. It's, it's also the kind of things I, I, I like to draw, but I'll. I make it cuter and cuter. Every st step you can see a little difference and uh, it becomes a little bit a nicer kid. So after doing this uh, step, I uh, take a photo or I scan, depending on uh, what I have uh, available. And uh, I do some research, some uh, color uh, research with um, a raster uh, image software, like in that case it's Affinity Photo. And I make several tries until I find the one that I I like. Uh, you will see that I have a very basic logo in the beginning after I put my Muga design, my own web style logo, and then in the end the, some kind of VS, which is not the real logo of Vector Stylers, it's just like a, a little re reference. And uh, in that case, I know exactly the color I will use because I've done this step. It can happen previously, now I'm using this uh, process a lot, but previously sometimes I just start with a um, with a sketch that I scan and I trace my um, uh, my vector lines just above and make some color research, but sometimes it takes uh, more time and uh, the raster is very uh, efficient. I mean, in, in half an hour, I can do uh, the, the image I want. So, and starting from that, it would be uh, the reference colors. I will even pick uh, uh, with a color picker or the style picker. 
to use in my vector drawing. Okay, so now you see the, the my final one, the, the, the vector one. So it's a little bit different as well. It's a little bit cleaner, maybe a little bit less expression, uh, a little bit uh, more stiff, but it's also part of a style. It means I totally accept the, the fact that uh, most of my sketches are more uh, uh, expressive than the, the final drawing, but the vector, uh, I think it's also this, uh, part of a style and I totally, um, I have no problem with that. Okay, so we can see the, the line work. Uh, in my case, uh, I try to make it clean uh, as as, uh, as much as possible because uh, uh, when there are too many um, uh, overlapping shapes, uh, it can be confusing. And sometimes, uh, if it's a little bit, uh, I have to be a little bit accurate, or uh, uh, the elements are quite small, uh, things like this. I want to have something the cleaner I can. So one of my uh, strategy I just mentioned before is to copy and paste the exact same shape. And uh, using the fusion mode and using uh, transparency and uh, some mask effect uh, and just the blur effect, I can uh, make some uh, transition and some different uh, uh, effect inside the, the same shape, which looks uh, apparently like one shape, but actually is several shape. Uh, let's say, for instance, the, the cheek here, it's several shape uh, one above each other. So this is uh, a way I like. I know, but because um, Vector Styler, like some other software, he has the, the gradient mesh, but to be honest, in every software I find it too complicated and I have uh, some nice control uh, just using these simple tricks and I'm quite happy about the result and I think that spending twice the time trying to master the, the gradient mesh wouldn't help me much and um, I feel comfortable with this uh, work, uh, workflow. So, command Y. So talking about the face, so let's say that uh, some elements, uh, very simple elements, for instance, you have a cheek here. So when you have this cheek, it's here and you see that it's a very simple uh, shape with just a gradient, okay? So we have a gradient here. This is the gradient I use. Gradient, concentric, which is called a radial in some other software. And uh, I just uh, make this, but the second part is plus uh, what I, that I had to the gradient is, of course, you can see I had a blur, a blur effect, which is, you can see the little camera here. So I double click, you see, I have my Gaussian blur. So the settings depends on the size of your image, of course, and you have to, to get some different tries. And uh, so these two effects, just using uh, a gradient plus uh, the, the, the blur effect, it gives you some nice and simple transition. Okay, so it's quite nice. On the top, I just add some uh, little highlights, but not too strong. This is one of the things in that case, if you want something that, which is soft, you don't make uh, some uh, too strong contrast. You use some uh, very, um, very simple uh, contrast. In that case, you have a color, which is just a basic color, and I also apply a blur. I have some of the highlights which are uh, separated from the, uh, the shape they are on. For instance, I can have a, a layer for the head and uh, inside this layer there will be some of the highlights, but in some cases also, I, if they are really on the top of uh, all of the layer, I want to use it because it, I can have some nice um, uh, settings that I can do at once. For instance, I can have all the highlights on the same uh, layer that I find a little bit too strong, so I can just use the property of a layer and um, for instance, I put it like 90% transparency, I mean opacity, instead of uh, having it full uh, 100% and, uh, and I can control a lot of elements at the same time. But in some cases, because of a shape uh, is uh, specific, especially for instance, when I use my lines to create these highlights, uh, I have to make them uh, inside the shape because the shape is the container. So in that case, these kind of highlights, they have to be inside the shape, so in the same layer. But some of the, of the other highlights, if they don't depend on the on the shape, uh, I prefer to have them on a separate layer. So this is how I do. You can see that for the, for the eye, especially for the, the part of the eye, uh, I have the eyelid, I uh, just use a simple, um, a simple gradient and uh, for the, the shadow, uh, of the eyelid, between eyebrows and uh, eyelid, uh, I use um, just uh, uh, simple colors and I use uh, once again my blur effect to make some smooth uh, transition. For the eye itself, I use uh, a gradient, concentric gradient, uh, which is actually in, uh, 
I was talking about the, how the how the light is bouncing, and that's why I uh, I use some uh, of this kind of um, gradient here, and I have some little highlights that I use uh, after that, and it gives this uh, uh, round, uh, smooth look uh, instead of using, of course, a, a, a linear gradient, which make uh, your shape look very uh, very flat. So I try to create every, all the time a little shadow and things like this, and it gives some uh, uh, some uh, volume, it gives uh, the volume feel on uh, on the on the work. I mentioned uh, previously about the, the colors, and as you can see, this is probably not sure, but uh, probably the only part when I use uh, a full black and full white in this image. I try to really reduce um, the use of black and white because reducing it makes uh, it more uh, powerful and so uh, by contrast with the other shape, the other shape will look smoother and, uh, and uh, the, the, it gives also a bigger strength to the, to the high. So that's how I do. Another trick, this one is very simple for the, uh, for the nose, it's just uh, basic, like uh, I say, and it's the same effect like I do the highlight here. I just clip a shape, you can see this shape, I clip it inside, and um, inside the, the whole nose, and I just put some, um, some blur effect again, and uh, give me some uh, nice and simple transition. So it's very always the same effect. Here you have the line. I have copied the uh, the top of the nose. I just erase the, the line on the bottom. I keep the one on the top, and I use my uh, traditional, uh, if I can say, <laughs> traditional, but up, what I, what I call light here, which is a line. You see, if you check Alt W, you can see that it has a profile. So it starts gradually and it ends gradually, and I had a little blur. And I found this is really interesting. You have a nice control and you have nice transition uh, between the elements. The only tricky part uh, here was the fact that uh, to give this uh, cheek round, I wanted to give it here as well. But since I used some um, here, I used some blur effect. What happened is it was becoming invisible in that case. Which means that out of um, when I was here, out of, uh, of the shape, it was blurry, and so by the transparency of the blurriness, you could you could see the, the ear on the background. So I had a little trick. I create, I copied the the, the round the, the circle that contains everything. I, I call it container. I give it no color, uh, whatever it's uh, the feel of. Uh, of a stroke color, I just put nothing. It's just a container, so I put it. Uh, I put inside my uh, my uh, blurry shape, and then I also make a copy of the same shape but with no blur. And the copy of a shape with no blur, I will show you. You can see here there is no more blur. You can see the the, the transition is not like here smooth. This is a, just a copy, and this copy, I also put a mask to make it uh, gradually visible, and then you can see that on the left part, it's invisible. And if I mix the two, I mix the blurry part and the non-blurry part, and I have the, the mask to make the transition. It gives me here the opacity I need, because I have to hide the, the here, and here I have the smooth transition. This is the only tricky part. The rest is quite simple. Is what I just mentioned in the previous step, which is gradient uh, and, and blur most of the time, and the use of a mask from time to time. Okay, so now we can just talk a little bit about the, the shoes. The idea of the shoes is just to mention uh, some simple uh, tricks. Like you can see, I use my uh, up. I have uh, my sole, and I have a line inside. Okay, with a blur effect, which is very uh, one of my my classic, if I could say so. And uh, once again, the idea is to really use something which is uh, smooth. 
So if you exaggerate the blurriness, you will have something which, uh, which look like uh, over soft, too soft. And uh, of course, if you don't use it enough, you have something which doesn't look like the, some plastic round shape, which is the case in that, uh, uh, in that shoes. So same here, a little blur in the effect. It looks like, uh, and this one use a blur and uh, inner shadow. Inner shadow, so it gives this little uh, feel of uh, the, the, the shape is a, a, little, a little bit concave. So this is interesting here. Here on the top is the classic, like I'm using, let me just find the shoe. Up, oh, sorry for the, the time. So I have my my shoe and I have my shadow inside. Okay, as you, as you can see, the shadow is here. This is this shape, and this shape I just give it a blur. It's clipped inside. Of course, it goes over the, the shape. It's clipped inside, and I give a blur, and you give some nice transition. Of course. I have to follow the, the logical uh, shape, but it gives uh, a nice feeling. For the scratch, what is interesting is that it's just a simple uh, linear uh, gradient. And this is uh, very simple. You see, it, you can have it here. You see the, the gradient is very basic. It's just the orientation of the gradient that has to be logical. Okay, the, the direction, of course, the direction is here and it's following the, the light source. So if it's, uh, if it's not uh, flat or too vertical or something like that, it gives a good feeling and uh, it's uh, interesting. And I have these highlights, always the same. I copy the, the global shape here. I erase this part of, um, of the lines and I, I, and I use my profile and uh, you know the trick now. Just the line, I use my profile, always the same, and some blur effect. And of course you have a total control, sometimes you find it too, too bright, sometimes you find it too, uh, I don't know, too red or whatever. You have a nice control on it. So this is uh, not very complicated, it's just uh, once you have your own um, process, your own workflow, I think it's, it's not very complicated. Uh, and using the color picker, it can be uh, of a style picker here. The style picker can help also you to to uh, really really uh, reproduce uh, the effect you want very fast. For instance, you have a, a shape here. You could just create an ellipse and you pick up uh, some effects from another one, and it's very very fast. To be honest, I could make um, a library of gradient because Vector Styler has a very interesting. Uh, 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 preset uh, functions and of course the preset functions are also uh, apply to uh, to gradients but to be honest um, I, I like the, uh, the, the style picker and uh, I think it's very fast and, uh, and effective so uh, I have no problem and don't, I don't need to create my library it means once I, I, I feel like I have a, a nice gradient or something like that I just create the other shape and I pick up um, the effect and I find it very uh, powerful so that's it for today. I hope uh, you learned something interesting. And uh, you know that if you have uh, questions, you can find some uh, other people very qualified on uh, the forum of Vector Styler. And also, if you are using another software, I think that some of the, uh, of the tips and some of the process may apply to other software. So uh, enjoy and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.